In this video, we are going to talk about differential diagnosis for Achilles tendinopathy. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. If you are a regular follower, then you have probably watched our earlier, more general video on six tips to diagnose lower limb tendinopathy. They were, number one, epidemiological data, two, highly localized pain at the tendon emphasis, three, pain onset 24 hours after high and fast load activities, four, a proportional load pain relationship, five, some hallmark signs, and six, muscle wasting. In this video, we will specify those six points for the Achilles tendon and look at possible differential diagnoses. Achilles tendinopathy is prevalent in all age groups and basically everyone who runs. While Achilles tendinopathy can occur at the emphasis, like described in case of insertional pain, but it is also the only exception to this rule in case of mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy. The hallmark sign for Achilles tendinopathy is morning stiffness, which has a very high sensitivity. So if morning stiffness is not present, one can consider another diagnosis. Oftentimes, patients also complain about pain after rising from sitting. To examine muscle wasting, observe the calves for muscle bulk and differences and palpate the calves for tone, which is often reduced if patients have not been using them much. It's easy to directly perform the Thompson test for Achilles tendon ruptures, which you might consider in an acutely painful tendon with sudden loss of plantar flexion strength. So squeeze the calf muscles and look for the absence of plantar flexion for this test to be positive. To confirm the highly localized pain experience, we have different options. First, start out with palpation of the tendon at mid portion by squeezing the tendon between your thumb and index finger and compare it to the unaffected side. You can directly move on to perform the Royal London Hospital test to compare pain ratings in plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. This test is positive if palpation is more painful in a plantar flexed position. Then you can move on to perform the ARC test, which can help you to differentiate Achilles tendinopathy from an inflammation of the tendon sheath. Palpate for the thickened part or nodule of the tendon and ask the patient to move his ankle into plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. In Achilles tendinopathy, the nodule should be moving. If it doesn't move and you can palpate crepitations, you would be considering paratenonitis, possibly with increased swelling left and right of the tendon. Management for the paratenon should be rest and local NSIDs or heparin-based creams. In insertional Achilles tendinopathy, you can palpate around the tendon insertion by pressing onto it with your thumb. If your patient complains about diffuse lateral Achilles or heel pain with burning quality or paresthesias, possibly radiating into the lateral side of the foot, you might want to consider sural nerve neuropathy. Kopitas et al. in the year 2015 describe a modified straight leg raise test to differentiate between sural nerve pathology and Achilles tendinopathy. To perform the test, have your patient in supine position and bring the affected ankle into dorsiflexion and inversion. Then bring the hip into flexion. Reproduction or modification of symptoms with hip flexion suggests sural nerve involvement. If the sural nerve is affected, your management will focus on neural mobilizations. In order to exclude a posterior impingement, you can passively hyperplantar flex your patient's ankle and look for pain provocation. In case of posterior impingement, patients do report pain in a plantar flex position in contrast to maximal dorsiflexion, like in insertional Achilles tendinopathy. Two additional differential diagnoses in mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy 
are plantaris tendinopathy, which presents with medial pain as the plantaris compresses against the medial Achilles tendon. Furthermore, an accessory or low soleus might be present in which the soleus inserts really low, maybe even as low as the calcaneus, which can lead to compartment syndrome-like symptoms. So patients complain of pain with running that settles quickly as soon as they stop. It's probably only possible to confirm those two with ultrasound imaging, which might be necessary if conservative treatment does not help after 6 to 12 months. The good news is that it's usually not necessary to have a different approach than with normal Achilles tendinopathy. For insertional Achilles tendinopathy, you can come across a Haglund's deformity, traction spurs, and bursitis, all of which do not alter the management approach, which is a graded loading program. At last, we would be looking for a pain load relationship in Achilles tendinopathy. You can start with walking or running to assess the pain, then start with double leg calf raises on the ground, progress to calf raises on a step, and then continue with single leg and single leg bent. You can also add external load if you want. A further progression would be to add speed to the single leg calf raises with the knee bent. At last, move on to hopping. Again, start with double leg, then single leg. You can then move on to forward, backward and sideways hopping. The final and most provocating test would be jumps for maximal height. For every stage, have your patient perform a couple of repetitions and gauge the pain score for each activity. What you're looking for in Achilles tendinopathy is a load dependent increase of their pain rating. All right, this was our video about differential diagnosis for Achilles tendinopathy. If you're curious about the diagnostic accuracy of different tests for mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy, make sure you watch the video to my right. I want to thank you for watching and please give this video a like if it was helpful to you, of course, and don't leave without subscribing if you want to stay up to date with our latest video releases. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.